So, boom. <laughs> Thoughts become things. <laughs> Choose the good ones. And that's actually what I'm going to talk about. Choosing the good ones. But first, and this is unusual because I, I've rarely, maybe one other time, have um, written a talk based on a song that was sung. But I did it this time. I was very inspired by that song. I listened to it over and over this week, wonderfully. So she starts out by saying, I'm standing. I can see it clearly. Never thought I'd live without the one I held so dearly. As the dawn arises, the truth comes shining through. My future there, so clearly. Just wanted one with you. And maybe I have to stand here in a world that's not so hazy to find a place worth running to. So I listened to that song, and especially that opening lyric, and I thought, wow, end of a romance, I guess, huh? Probably inspired this song. A love affair. And then I thought about, well, we all have lots of love affairs, and they're not just romantic. Some have a love affair with their home, with their job, with their car, with the city they live in. Some have love affairs with uh, their hobbies, their comic book collection, for instance. And sometimes these love affairs end very sadly, and they're difficult and heart-wrenching. But eventually, we move on. As the song says, here's your Broadway reference, time heals everything. <laughs> Good. But some of us have love affairs with other things, like despair, loneliness, diseases of various types, kinds, and models of the mind, body, or spirit. And time doesn't seem to heal those. Because they're habits. They're things that we learned, acquired, accepted, and sometimes destructively held on to. Sometimes we don't even realize they're there, these habits, these destructive habits, this despair that we acquired. We're so used to these destructive habits in our lives that we seem to not even know in any way, shape, or form how to lose them. Now, I've had relationships like that. I've had jobs like that. I've had eating habits like that. I've had apartments like that. <laughs> Too long in Hollywood. In my life, I have found that the causes end up to be from laziness, fear, and the worst of all, apathy. Sound familiar? Anybody have those floating around in their lives here and there? And if you take heed to Thomas Troward's decree that we are here to be happy, not only are you being lazy, fearful, and apathetic, you're being downright irresponsible. But it's your right. It's your right to be that way. Happy, sad, good, bad. It's your right because you are born free. Go ahead and sing it. Born free, <laughs> as free as the wind. It is your birthright to be independent with autonomy, sovereignty, permission, liberty, a powerful prerogative without constant, without constant constraint. You have no constraint to use carte blanche the services of the universe, the vast services of the universe. You are given self-determination, each one of us, the opportunity to infinite possibilities to have the exact experiences you desire. And that includes the crappy ones. And too many times, we waste this freedom, this sovereignty, this permission, this power in hassles and unhappiness. But, again, 
it's your right. Have at it. If that's what you want in your life, if that's how somehow strangely you're enjoying life. But I don't think you really want that. I don't think any of us really want that. Yes? I think we desire to move past the past. Yes? I think it is time to divorce, dissolve, resign from, split from, terminate, separate, vacate, abdicate, and just downright quit having hassles in our lives. Can I hear an I to that? I. Hell, let's do an amen to that. Now, you've heard this many times, but this time I want to let Ralph Waldo Emerson say it from his essay called History. He begins it this way. There is one mind common to all individuals. Everyone is an inlet to the same and to all of the same. Once admitted to the right of reason, which you are born with, you are made a freeman of the whole estate the whole enchilada, the whole Megillah, the entire universe. What Plato has thought, he may think. What a saint has felt, he may feel. What at any time has befallen any person, they can understand. Who hath access to this universal mind, and that is each and every one of us, is a party to all that is or can be done, for this is the only and sovereign agent. That's you, and you, and you, and you. The one and only sovereign agent of your life experiences. Now, nobody likes to hear that the junk they bring into their life is brought into the life with the same power that brings the goodness and the wonderfulness in our life. But it's true. Each and every one of us gets to choose the experiences we bring into our lives, the flavor, the color of the life surrounding us. We spent a month talking about the power of decision. You get to choose. You get to, to decide, do I want prizes or plunders? Prizes or plunders? I'll give you a moment to decide. Which do you want in your life? Maybe you want a combination. That's okay because it's your right. Let me continue with more of the song. Finally, the sun came out and I'm dancing in its rays. Even though the clouds of doubt had covered my light with grays, now every morning I don't fear its flame. Finally, the sun came out and I'll never be the same. Finally, the sun came out and I never will be the same. Are you ready to wake up? Yes? yes. yes. You are ready to be awake? Yes? yes? Because you are enough, you know. You don't need anything more. David Walker, the, uh, one of the mentors of, of Reverend James and I, and mine, and I, wrote a whole book on that subject. It says, you are enough, always have been, always will be. Always have been, always will be. He says, if we don't accept the fact that what we are is more important than what we do or have, we will live a lifetime with the self-inflicted pressure to perform. That's how I got this suit. I know, kind of a silly thing. Some of you have heard this story. Happened in January. I had a self-inflicted pressure regarding a suit to perform lack. I was ready. I had it in my head that I um, had a budget, and the budget was as it came to be in the end, one-fourth of what this suit cost. 
And I couldn't go past that. And I thought that was pretty good. And I couldn't find anything. <laughs> not even at Kmart. No, I couldn't find... <laughs> not that I couldn't find anything for that price. But did it look good? Did it feel good? No. But I couldn't get past. It took 24 hours, but I got around it. Thanks to my being open to release and reveal. And also, of course, thanks to my love, Patty, who was there to remind me what I already knew, but was wrapped in performing lack. So I got the suit. And the money that I think I didn't have to buy a suit four times more than I was thinking I could spend showed up within five days. Not that I didn't have the money to pay for it. I had the money to pay for it. I didn't charge it. It's just some of that money was for other things. So I pushed out. And I released that self-inflicted pressure to perform lack. Dr. Walker again, being made in the image and likeness of God isn't something we have to strive for. It's something we must have the courage to accept. And not just in easing times, not just during salad days, as people call when they're extra wealthy, not, uh, not um, during special occasions or in the areas of life that flow smoothly already. We all have areas in our life that flow smoothly already. Some of it is in uh, communication and relationships. Some of it is in our job or creative outlook, some of it is in our money, some of it, uh, for, uh, for some of us, it's in our health or a combination. Each and every one of us, you, me, everyone out there, everyone out there, are responsible to declare our individual independence from lack, from strife, from all those ideas that do not fulfill our mission of love only, forgive everything, remember who you are. To be happy. To be happy. Is that such a difficult thing to ask? Or here to be happy. And with our independence, we shall infuse energy, vibrancy, love, and peace into not only ourselves, but our center, our city, our state, our country, our globe, our universe. And so, with thanks to Thomas Jefferson, I want to share with you my declaration of independence. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Unfortunately, I couldn't put it in 30-point uh, type or else it would have been really long, which is a different kind of joke. <laughs> so I need, to, uh, I need to wear my glasses. Declaration of Independence. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one person to dissolve the bands and bonds of struggle, strife, lack, and faithlessness, which has connected them with a life that does not serve their greatest good, and to assume among the power of the universe the separate station of prosperity to which the laws of nature entitle them. A decent respect to the opinion of one who speaks in truth requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. I hold this truth to be self-evident, that I am created equal, that I am endowed by my creator that which is within me with certain unalienable rights, that among them are life, liberty, and happiness, that to secure these rights in my life, beliefs are instituted by me, deriving their just powers from the consent of my mind and through the laws of cause and effect. 
that whenever any form of my beliefs becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of me to alter or to abolish it and to institute new thoughts, new feelings, new perspectives, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect my safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that beliefs long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience has shown that many times I am more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right myself by abolishing the beliefs to which I am accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce me under absolute or partial lack. It is my right, it is my duty to throw off such beliefs and to provide new thoughts and feelings, new perspectives and beliefs for my future security and happiness. Such has been my patient sufferance and such is now the necessity which constrains me to alter my thinking and my beliefs. Part of the history of my present beliefs is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over my happiness. And so I now declare with full knowledge and embodying of the one power within, that one indestructible, absolute and self-existent cause, with that spirit expressing through me, which is the unity of all life, I claim and swear to use my creative thoughts to think from that eternal goodness, that eternal loving kindness, and that eternal givingness a divine intelligence. To act, be, and surround myself with love, abundance, vitality, and vibrance. To think, reason, and live without the bondage of any negativity from my past, without the consciousness of no, or the shoulda, woulda, coulda of not yet. Without water cooler gossip, or the news and opinions of CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, NPR, or any government or religion that may be running around in my mind like a rat in a cage, like squirrels in a whirling dervish, like chattering monkeys invading my consciousness. I therefore do claim in the name and by the authority of my birthright as an individualization of the source and substance of all, solemnly publish and declare that I am and of right ought to be free and independent of destructive thoughts and beliefs. And I am absolved from all allegiance to negativity and that all connection between me and the state of lack is and ought to be totally dissolved. And that as a free and independent personalization of God, I engage my full power to levy peace, prosperity, and love in my life from this day forward. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection and power of the divine intelligence within, I do hereby pledge my life and sacred honor to this declaration of independence. And so it is. Thank you. So I ask you to join me in this commitment, this declaration of independence, this declaration of freedom, by writing your signature in the air for yourself and for the betterment of our world. And say with me, as you write your name in the air, I am free to be me. You ready? I am free to be me. In the musical Tommy, the Who sang this, I'm free, I'm free. And freedom 
tastes of reality. I'm free. I'm free. And I'm waiting for you to follow me. Join me in this living of a commitment to be free and shine the living presence of the source and stuff, substance of all, the God within you to all throughout the rest of your days. Finally, the sun came out and I'll never be the same. My friends, say good morning to your new life. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you.